Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, here I am with Michelle, Josh, Holly, and Sarah. No, Karen, she's still in the US um, doing wonderful things over there. But we are about to record our final session of the Inspire series of season four. Season four? Yeah, yeah. yeah season four. Um, so for our last session tonight, we are talking about how to stay inspired, <clears throat> excuse me, nurturing creativity. How do we do that? Um, what are the challenges we face in staying motivated throughout the whole process? So throwing this open here, guys. <laughs> um, I was thinking about this, actually, and um, I was, from my point of view, this is what I've learned, um, which could be very different to other people. You can only inspire yourself so far. So we talk a lot about, um, you know, as writers, we work very much by ourselves and how we get ourselves through rejection and how we uh, become resilient, you know, but there's only so much that we can do by ourselves is what, is what I've learned because we are also our inner critics, our worst critics, um and we have all these other emotions going on inside us apart from it just being the writer so I think you have to accept we can go so far and really to stay inspired to become inspired to get through those bumps when we're not feeling inspired reach out to the community because we are all in it together and I can't stress that enough and I think if we end up just staying within our own heads constantly you know our profession is lonely enough at times anyway and it's harsh enough at times I really think the key is to reach out to other writers and to join groups and to put yourself out there and even just to speak to them on zoom or messages just something small steps but just something and for me that's been the best thing ever because you know we can only inspire ourselves for so long mm. yeah I, I agree with that Sarah I mean one of the things that I found is also apart from reaching out with physical people whether it's you know through online or whatever is curating all your social media feeds because mm. that can yeah. be a real big downer if you have yeah. got your, your personal page and then your author page, and then if your author page is different from your personal page and, you, and you're seeing this stuff and it's just like, man, this is really heavy stuff. Or it's stuff that doesn't lift me up. It doesn't make me feel good. Get rid of it. Move it. You, you, you have total control over how you consume social media and social media should be uplifting, should be inspiring, or should – Trigger you to go, okay, I never thought of that. That's a new idea. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't contemplated that. You know, all the all the all the groups on social media, like groups on Facebook, or the, you know, Squibby, the, the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, those sort of groups are great to be part of because you can ask questions like, as Sarah said, you're sitting in your head all day long. I've got no idea what I do with about pricing or something like that. Put it on <laughs> the Squibby group put it on, reach out to other people. So it is actually making those connections, making those yeah. connections, curate your social media so it actually inspires you and makes you feel good. Whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Instagram. I know, mm. Sarah, you are owning Instagram at the moment. So, <laughs> that, yes. you know, but that's, there's, these are one of these things we, we need to curate these things so it actually makes us feel good as opposed to just make us feel shit yeah, okay. yeah and yeah. and the other and the other the other thing i'm going to quickly just throw in is just keep creating stuff keep writing keep drawing keep if you see a tree and it makes you go oh that'll make a great story for write it do it just do it don't second guess yourself just yeah. write it and put it in the in the back part of the computer or whatever but just keep being creative keep tapping in to the big world of ideas and keep drawing them down and keep being inspired so that's yeah. that's that's my two things for um how to stay motivated. Yeah. Holly, you like to um walk a lot in nature for your inspiration. I do. Yeah, I get a lot of um I get a lot of mine from nature. Um I just I think 
for so many years, I didn't pay really close attention. I didn't take a lot of time for self-care for myself. And I just really didn't notice so much about the world around us. And now that I do, I, I just find, you know, like you're like, even in the clouds say, you know, I'm always checking them for like words or shapes or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. just the color and, you know, water, um, I guess water and reflection. That's the, those are my two most favorite things, especially mm -hmm. the ocean. Mm -hmm. but I'm always trying to get those reflections and I really love those the groups too I like um there's a, a group that I meet with every Friday and it just happens it really works good for me because also Friday used to be a hard day for me just because of uh, just because that was always a day I always looked forward to and my husband would come home and we'd be all home for the weekend so I needed to do something on Fridays and just so happened this one particular group that I was starting to meet with, they said, Hey, Friday's a great day. Well, that's perfect for me. Mm -hmm. So then I know that I have one thing to do on Friday. And what usually happens is often there's, there's up to five of us. Sometimes there's only two that are available, but it's very rare that we have to cancel the meeting. We just go with whoever's available just you know and we just message if we can't you know can't join and i'll find like like it, it's such a close group that it I, because i find you get so immersed in everything like sometimes you don't have other a lot of other people in your circle and then you can just really pretty much it's one of those kind of groups you can just talk about anything you know sometimes it isn't even about writing but sometimes you need to talk about those other things so that you can get back to your writing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, wise words, Molly. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you, Michelle? Um, It probably took me a long time to figure this out. Um, For a long time, I thought I had to do everything and go to all the groups and, you know, not – actually say that I felt unmotivated or that I didn't feel like writing um, and it took me a long time to be okay with the fact that I find going to writing groups super overwhelming um, so I found I have one or two book besties who we go and have coffee and you know finding something that works for me um, I think another thing is running your own race so you don't have to be constantly comparing yourself to what other people are doing you're just doing your own thing like it took me a long time to figure out that that was equally as um successful it's equally as valid if if I want to do something that's not you know the 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 common thing or not a, a path well worn I think, I think that's really important and then um like Josh said, setting boundaries on social media. So I'm not looking at stuff, which is making me feel worse instead of better. Like Sarah said, having those tribe around you who has your back and who's going to give you um, open and honest feedback, but also going to lift you up when you're down. And like what Holly said, I'm a huge believer in stepping away from the laptop. So staring at a blank piece of paper or staring at your laptop when you are not feeling inspired you're not going to find inspiration on a blank screen or a blank piece of paper you need to get up you need yeah. to walk away you need to go somewhere that fills you up and for me that's walking in nature so either at the local park or or down um, on the beach but setting your own boundaries is really, really important and protecting your own peace and being able to stand up for that. Sometimes even within your own family can be tricky when you, you need to say, no, you know, I just, I need a minute. Um, or if you are super inspired can be the other thing where you like honoring that as well and saying, I, I need a minute to get this idea out of my head and, and onto paper and not constantly feeling like you're torn between wanting to create and having enough time to create because then that can have a negative effect as well. So, yeah, just 
owning the chaos and 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 finding your own way to do it. Mm-hmm. Owning the chaos. That, that, that's a really mm-hmm. good way to put it, isn't it? <laughs> owning your chaos. Um, and doing what's right for you, you mm-hmm. know, like Holly loves, well, you and Holly both love the beach, you know. Josh, you post a lot about uh, and you show Great. views of the bush, you know, that's the setting mm-hmm. and... Um, Sarah, you're just everywhere. You just get your inspiration from everywhere. <laughs> from your, your Instagram feed tells me. <laughs> um, but it, it just comes down to being you, doesn't it? Being yeah. you what? Um, I'm, in, I'm inspired by others and I think that is yeah. the, you know, it, it sounds naff but it is so genuine in the writing community, particularly the kidlit community. We really are all just sludging our way through and when you do yeah. have you know author friends who you've seen and you know behind the scenes are equally sludging their way through things and then they get a break and they get you know a deal or something you genuinely are like yes I love this for you and it's a you know it opens the doors for others as well like we're all working towards something and I think you genuinely feel um inspired by them and it gives you the nudge you need um but I think also completely what Michelle's saying is absolutely right own those moments when you don't feel inspired that's okay it's all part of what we do it's it's okay to have you know that week two weeks however long it is a day whatever where you feel totally uninspired you don't want to write you don't you can't think of anything you don't look at the screen you're not failing you just are not inspired for that moment and that's okay because when it comes back it's almost like it's a a new start and you have fresh eyes and you have fresh thoughts and um it's just all part of what we do um and yeah so I I just think don't be so hard on yourself we, we don't have to continually because it's such a long game isn't it and mm-hmm. you know someone said recently one published book does not make you a successful author and that is so 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 true because once you've had that big break you will be starting again and again and again and again constantly unless you are one of the very tiny chosen few (laughs) um you will continually start again with every new book so you will need to you know build up the inspiration constantly so don't be so hard on yourself yeah, there's no right or wrong way, is there? It's just um, just do you. So, um, and I think we might end it on that note, um, an uplifting note. That's what we need to uh, be doing and supporting each other to help us all with our creativity and to keep the inspiration going and the motivation going. So thank you so much, uh, everyone. Um, we are going to have a break for a little while, um, resume again probably after Easter, um, which is not that far off, the shops tell me, with Easter bunnies and chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you, everyone, and uh, take care. We'll see you again soon.